Aksum, the heart of our empire and the cradle of Ethiopian civilization. Even so, every time a caravan stops here to sell its wares, the city seems less grand. More roofs need thatching, fewer shops are open, and even the shouts of the hawkers are ever so slightly less audible. My son doesn't notice, of course. Ever since we entered the city, the boy has stared in awe at every building. It is a marvelous sight for a country lad living in the northern highlands. As we passed a church, a set of golden curtains caught his eye. Father, have you ever seen such a treasure? Why does nobody guard it? Are they not afraid of thieves? I could not help but smile. Why hire strong arms when even the queen dares not take them? A deep frown creased my son's brow. The boy apparently did not know the story of his ruler yet. Forty years ago, when our queen, Yodit, was but a princess, she discovered the very reason why those curtains do not need any guards. Yodit was truly beautiful. Every lord in the empire competed for her hand, much to the displeasure of Gidajan, her nephew and the heir to the throne. Gidajan devised a plan to be rid of her. In the night, he stole the golden curtains and hid them in her room. When the palace guard discovered the treasure, she was locked in the deepest cells. Luckily, there were some who refused to believe the accusations. One loyal captain named Samuel helped her escape through a secret tunnel. My son smiled when he heard of Yodit's escape. As long as she stayed in the Ark Sumite Empire, however, Yodit would never be safe from Prince Gidejan. Her journey had merely begun. Despite the late hour, the market of Aksum was still crowded. Vendors shouted from several wooden stalls, describing their goods, boats of silk from the Far East, Olibanum incense from Arabia, bracelets made from Egyptian glass, our own Ethiopian ivory. Tired of browsing these stalls, we sat down on a low wall next to a shop. Father, Daniel said, will you please tell me the rest of Yodit's story? Despite my fatigue, I decided to entertain the boy. Yodit traveled north for many years, searching for someone who could help her seek revenge for the humiliation she had suffered at the hands of Gideon. Eventually, when making camp near the border of Egypt, the princess had rumor that perhaps presented the opportunity she had been awaiting. The Syrian prince Anubis was traveling the region looking for a suitable bride. But how could she, an exiled princess, convince such a powerful man? Zanobis was impressed by Yodit's achievements. He sought after this famous princess and asked her to marry him. Daniel responded, Queen Yodit is truly a strong woman, father. How did she? I quickly raised my hand to stop him. No, son. No more questions now. It will soon be dark and we need to return to the inn. The meal will do us both much good. Perhaps I shall tell you about one of her great victories before going to bed. The trade mission in Aksum was quite successful. I sold all of my grain and bought some casks of wine, olive oil and spices. Those goods would be sure to fetch a good price at home. I looked up from the accounts and rubbed my eyes, tired from reading by the light of a single candle. Everything all right with the camels? I said to greet the boy. He nodded. I offered him a cup of tea and responded. Let me tell you more about Yodit before we turn in. After marrying Prince Anobis, Yodit had to be patient for her vengeance. Her husband had to become king and build a larger army if they were to ever defeat the mighty Aksumite Empire. Five years had passed since Anubis had taken the throne when Yodit learned that the Aksumite king, Dagnashan, 
was planning a military expedition to the east. If she could send an elite force to ambush and kill Dagnajan, the Aksumite Empire would be severely crippled. When the news of Dagnajan's death reached the city of Aksum, both of his sons tried to seize the throne for themselves. A civil war broke out and the once mighty empire began to crumble. Of course, your dip A soft snoring drew my attention to my son. The lad was already sleeping. Outside the northern gate, the camels groaned. Irritated by the treaders mounting the animals to begin the long journey back to the Ethiopian highlands. Drivers urged the large caravan forward with loud shouts and cracking whips. As I took my place next to my boy, the sun slowly began to rise above the hills. Not far from the gate, we passed a field of great stone stele. Some stood tall, reaching for the sky, but mostly purple, their pieces scattered over the ground. Father, Daniel asked, looking up at a towering stele. When we entered the city, he told me that these stones marked the graves of ancient kings. Is Dagrajan buried here as well? I shook my head. No, my son. Those kings are long dead, and the body of Dagnajan was never recovered. His two sons were far too busy trying to slay each other. While the Aksumite Empire was divided by civil war, Yodid ordered a fleet to be built. An invading force would cross the Red Sea and strike hard at Musawa, the most important harbor of the empire. So Gidejan had managed to kill his brother to take the throne in the meantime. He had also lost the north to Yodit. Soon she would advance to the capital for the final battle. Before I could dispel Daniel's youthful naivety about warfare, shouts arose from the front of the caravan to stop for the night. The caravan had stopped at the top of a hill after a long day of traveling. Some merchants sat around the campfire, sharing wineskins and roasting a goat. Others were already pitching their tents. Up here, the nights could be very cold. Daniel had just finished his portion of goat. Father, would you finally tell me how Yodit became queen of Aksu? Before I could respond, Tariku, an old lean merchant with white hair, stood up. He stared fiercely at my son with his one eye. So you want to hear about our good queen? Tariku fought against Yodit's troops in Aksum, I whispered to my son. Daniel could only nod to the one-eyed man. Thirty years ago, Tariku began solemnly. I was patrolling the northern hills of Aksum, and suddenly I saw a sea of banners in the distance. The sun reflected upon rows of armored men. Yodit had finally arrived to destroy the cradle of Ethiopian civilization. I shivered, for her fury was legendary. I saw how Gidijan finally fell, his body covered with blood. He was wrong to kill his brother, yes but he was the rightful heir to the throne. I tried to defend my homeland from disaster and lost my eye for it. A small price for such an honor. Now you remember this well, boy. Your deeds rise to the throne was not some glorious adventure. It was a bloody mess. The old man leaned back, sighing. Glancing at my son, I noticed that he suddenly seemed older than he had this morning. Nobody dared to whisper another word. 